Hi, I'm Jenny Shampoo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and we're here today with Jason Olson. Dr. Olson is currently um, a U.S. Navy Foreign Area Officer. Uh, he served in the past as a Latter-day Saint Navy chaplain, and he holds a Ph.D. in Near Eastern and Judaic Studies from Brandeis University and a B.A. in Ancient Near Eastern Studies and the Hebrew Bible from BYU. Today, we're talking about uh, Jacob, chapters one through four, and we're looking at a relief sculpture by Ben Hammond. Um, it's called In the Similitude. This is cast bronze done in about 2008. Hammond is an award-winning artist from Idaho. So Jason, let me just turn it over to you and ask, what are we looking at here and how does this um, beautiful sculpture relate to these scriptures in Jacob? Thank you so much, Jenny. Uh, th this is a really striking sculpture by Ben Hammond. Um, I I've never seen anything quite like it in the sense that it, it focuses so much on, on the deed and the, the intention for action uh, that both Abraham and Isaac are addressing mm -hmm. and experiencing. Um, I I've never seen anything where the the angel uh, is physically restraining Abraham from from completing the deed. Um, it's not just persuading his mind or you know getting him to to change his decision, but Abraham is about to to complete the deed itself, and and the angel physically stops him, um, showing. Uh, Abraham's not just the belief that he had in God, but his full intent to obey God, which which to me is uh, is represented in Jacob four verse five, uh, which which focuses and interprets the akedah or the binding of Isaac that that whole story from the five books of Moses from the Torah in a very uh, what I think a Hebraic way. Um, there, there are other interpretations influenced by Hellenism and Greek thought that that focus on Abraham's faith and Abraham's belief and what's going on inside Abraham's mind and heart. Um, but both this uh, sculpture and the scripture uh, talk about uh, talk about the 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 deed. It's focused on the action. Um, it says that uh, it was accounted unto Abraham in the wilderness to be obedient unto the commands of God in offering up his son Isaac, which is a similitude of God and his only begotten son. So the, the Book of Mormon takes, I think, the Hebrew perspective that Abraham was blessed and rewarded and covenanted with God because of um, his his bias for action, his bias to do the deeds of obedience. Mm -hmm. um, it, and um and that 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 cuts against other christian interpretations it's actually i think is a more a more jewish interpretation of of this event and uh the, the sculpture um demonstrates the action there's you know it's not uh trying to get into abraham's mind and uh, it's it's very focused on on the physical deed so um why is Jacob talking about Abraham and Isaac in this passage? So Jacob is, he's, he's very much in this context of, he's got his brother Nephi, uh, his father Lehi. They've come out of Jerusalem. Uh, the interpretation of the five books of Moses is central to their religious culture and their civilization. So. Um, Jacob's trying to teach his people about the purpose of of the law of Moses, and mm -hmm. and that's what he's doing. I think in in Jacob four, yeah. um, he, the 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 stories in which the Nephites are familiar are most familiar are the stories of the five books of Moses. So uh, that's why I think it's so powerful when you have these Book of Mormon prophets uh, go, referring back to the five books of Moses because it it shows it's evidence to me of the um, the Torah-based or the, the the books of Moses-based mm -hmm. 
culture in which they come. So, and that's why he's, yeah. he talks about the intent of the law of Moses. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we keep the law of Moses, it pointing our souls to him. Um, and again, focused on the deed. We keep the law of Moses. We don't just believe in the law of Moses. We keep it. And for this cause, it is sanctified unto us for righteousness. So it's it's the deeds, it's the obedience that mm-hmm. sanctifies us for righteousness, which is entirely in keeping with uh, all the other Hebrew prophets mm-hmm. that, uh, throughout the Bible. That um, for them, you know, belief is is a component, but belief must always lead to action. Yeah. and righteous deeds and and it's the righteous deeds that sanctify us. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um so I've read your book, The Burning Book, which is kind of your memoir of having grown up in the Jewish faith and then finding the Book of Mormon and um and converting to the Latter-day Saint Church, um Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um and I noticed in that book that you were really drawn to um the Abrahamic covenant that comes up again and again in the Book of Mormon. And um I, I wondered how you feel like that applies to these scriptures in Jacob 4 and to this piece of art um in terms of how the Book of Mormon shows that God remembers his covenants and um that the the covenant with Abraham continues. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. I I mean the thing that's unique about the Book of Mormon is Lehi and Nephi and Jacob and these these first prophets are coming out of the Abrahamic world. The Ab- you know they're they're bringing the Abrahamic covenant with them to the New World to ancient America. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything that they're teaching and preaching is is referring back to the covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, that's really fascinating. And I know I noticed too, looking at these scriptures, that when Jacob refers to the sacrifice of well, the, this moment between Abraham and Isaac, and how it's in the similitude of the only begotten and his sacrifice, it's kind of queuing us up for leading into uh, his allegory of the tame and wild olive trees, and this whole idea of um, the scattering and gathering of Israel, and the way God brings his people back together and remembers the covenants and how everyone yeah. will be brought back. And yeah. So just like you're saying, very much in line with that sort of more traditional um, understanding of the covenant and of um, the role of God's people. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph Smith should not, by all accounts, he should not be interested in the restoration of natural Israel, right? Of the, the literal descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why why would he even be interested? That's not what anybody else around him is interested in. Um they're interested in um predestination or, you know, or um or free will or, you know, the nature of salvation for the individual Christian believer. They're not um, so for the Book of Mormon to focus so much on the gathering and the restoration of natural Israel, mm-hmm. to me, is is evidence of, of what it purports to be. Mm, interesting. Um, if we could just look at the art piece again, um, I love that you pointed out the way the angel is really having to pull up on Abraham's shoulder to stop him in this moment. Yeah. Um, and that got me looking at sort of all of the, the hands in this piece. So I noticed Isaac's hands are bound um, and he's in a very like submissive, obedient kind of a posture. Yeah. And then Abraham's two hands, one has this knife, like just poised, ready to move, ready to plunge the knife. But the, his left hand is is very lovingly and sort of casually resting on the shoulder of Isaac in a very familiar way. And that just broke my heart, See, you know, that seeing that tension between the way his two hands are like the way he's being pulled in these two different directions. Did you have any other like personal reaction to the artwork? Yeah. I mean, I think it is kind of shocking um, how high uh, Abraham's, you know, right shoulder is right elbow. Mm -hmm. Um, The, the angle is is very striking, very jarring. I wanted to say from an ancient Near Eastern point of view, you know, child sacrifice is rampant in uh, in ancient Canaan. Uh, we, we know about Moloch worship. And so contextually, you know, for Abraham 
to feel and believe that he's being commanded by this God uh, to sacrifice his son is, is nothing unusual. There's nothing unusual. There's all the other gods are in the, in the region are also not, you know, not all of them, but they're also commanding um, people to sacrifice their children to appease them. Hmm. And so, so Abraham doesn't think that this is unusual. It's just a requirement from this, the God that he worships. And so what's so unique in my interpretation, of course, rabbis and, and biblical commentators, Christian, Jewish, Islamic, uh, for centuries have been trying to understand this event. But I see it as um, as the clarity of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob intervening and saying, no, I am a God that does not tolerate child sacrifice at all it's mm-hmm. it is a c- total abomination and so after this moment we see all of the hebrew prophets really railing against uh, mm-hmm. child sacrifice fascinating um dr olson thank you so much for sitting down with us today um and talking about these scriptures thank you jenny <laughs>